Hello folks, in the previous video I gave an introduction of Heroku platform as a service. In this subsequent video I am going to cover how to create a Heroku account and thereafter I will start step by step process of deploying our sentiment analysis web app on Heroku. I will start with creating and setting up a virtual environment and then I will move on to uh, in fact uh, create uh, the runtime uh, txt file and uh, uh, that is going to be the last step uh, in this video so this is the part one of the deployment on heroku topic and i will be covering part two and remaining steps in the subsequent video so please watch this video till the end so that you know the steps to uh, deploy web app on heroku from the beginning Folks, this is Nitin welcoming you to the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data, Hadoop, virtual reality and cloud computing. And you can acquire the related skill set in order to advance your career in these fields. This channel takes on hands-on approach to build AI based products and application. So if you are new to uh, this channel, then consider subscribing to it. Or if you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about the hottest technologies of 21st century. So let's create the free Heroku account by going on to the uh, Heroku website. So here is this uh, web page uh, for creating the Heroku account, signup.heroku.com, where you can provide your first name, last name, email address, so and so forth. One thing to note here is that you need to select the primary development language as python here and then you can click on uh, i'm not a robot and then click free account okay so you will receive once you click on it you will receive an email on your email id asking uh, you to click on the link to activate the account when you click on that link you will be asked to set up the password okay and next step is to basically download heroku command line so first step is to create this account and next one is to uh, basically download the uh, heroku cli or command line interface okay and this is the web page for uh, this is the direct link for uh, you know uh, downloading this heroku cli so you can see there are various options here uh, mac os is here okay so you can uh, download the installer from mac os then you have uh, 64 bit and 32 bit installer for windows you can download uh, either of it uh, according to your uh, uh, laptop configuration or uh, desktop configuration and then we have ubuntu 16 plus uh, installer instructions as well so i clicked on 64 bit installer and then i double clicked on it to install the uh, Heroku CLI okay and uh, this CLI uh, or this command line interface is an application which basically allows you to interact with Heroku from your systems terminal okay so you can just download and install the Heroku CLI from this web page okay then uh, once the Heroku CLI is installed you need to type a command called Heroku login okay so Heroku CLI is nothing uh, but it just integrates uh, everything with your uh, existing PowerShell. Okay, so I will type PowerShell here and I will type then right click on this. Okay, and type run as administrator. Okay, because some of the times you need to have the administrator access to run few of the commands. Okay, so uh, the Heroku CLI is kind of configured uh, itself with PowerShell. So you can just type Heroku login to log into your Heroku account. Okay. And you will see that a browser will be opened. So now this instruction says that uh, press any key. So I just pressed any key here. Okay. And it opened a web page on browser saying login so i just click on login uh, maybe because i have already provided my credentials so it's automatically asking for login so now you can see the message logged in right so you can just close this page or keep it open uh, according to your choice okay and now 
return back to your CL, uh, PowerShell window. Okay, so here you can see that uh, it says logged in as uh, my email ID. Okay, here. Now, uh, it should now be logged in. And so basically, you need to uh, change the directory to the location where your uh, uh, AI app is from where you actually move to Git repository. Okay, so the git repository movement related steps i'm not covering here uh, i'm assuming that you already know how to basically move uh, your code into uh, git okay or, or github right so if you see i have this location on my uh, system and you can see this there is one folder i have created git repo where i always keep my uh, all of my uh, code related to whatever projects I build. Okay, so similarly for this, I have uh, uh, this deep and machine learning projects, and inside this, I have built sentiment analysis Flask web app, and inside that, I have kept my AI app. Okay, and you can see all these files here, right? So from here, I actually move this particular uh, code related to this AI app. Okay, onto my GitHub page. Okay, or GitHub repository. You can very well uh, go onto my GitHub page and you can see that uh, there is a separate folder inside build sentiment analysis flask cap for AI app. Okay, where I have kept all the files. So you can just, uh, uh, you know, clone the uh, clone that repository from my GitHub page into your system. And then you can follow all the subsequent steps, which I'm going to show you now. Okay, so the next step is to uh basically change the directory and come to the root directory of ai app okay so that's what i'm going to do here uh i'm going to change the directory here so cd okay and then i'm on g drive then i need to change the directory to this particular root directory of my ai app okay so i need to change the directory to root directory of ai app so you can see here that I have changed the directory to my root. Now I'm inside my root directory. And if I do ls, you can see all the files, the static templates, folder, static folder, app.py, proc file requirements, runtime, sentiment analysis, .h5, which is my machine learning model file. Okay. Now the next step is to initialize the directory with our app. And we will type something like git in it to initialize it. Okay. So type it. And you can see that it says reinitialize because I've already initialized it previously. Okay. Now we need to enable the virtual environment uh, where we will be keeping. Uh, so virtual environment is nothing but a separate environment. We keep it for one particular project where we keep all the libraries and uh, uh, files specific to that project. So we can create multiple virtual environments keeping one environment each for each of our project okay so consider this ai app and um, the environment which i'm going to create separate for this ai app so we will type something like virtual env okay to enable the virtual environment hyphen p then c and then slash users then and account at three slash python dot exe i need to mention the uh, basically i need to mention the path of the python exe file here okay uh, otherwise it may cause some issue if you um, either you can uh, you know create an environment variable and you can directly mention python dot ext or python otherwise if you have not uh, created any environment variable then you can provide the qualified path just like I'm providing here and then VENV okay and then press enter so it will create a virtual environment so I I'll show you okay so here you can see that VENV folder is created now earlier it was not there so if you see here you can see there there was no VENV folder now okay so now it has created and uh, it's performing several other steps right now so the VNV environment is created separately for our app. Okay. So you can see here it has run a set of commands. Okay. And it has 
uh, enable the virtual environment for us now we, we need to activate this virtual environment and in order to activate it we will type a command something like dot venv okay slash scripts and slash activate to activate our virtual environment and now you can see that there is uh, something like in braces inside braces venv that means our environment is activated you can see here right so if it is a prefix is there like venv and venv is the name of our environment so it has activated it okay so if you get any issues uh, while running this command then uh, you can uh, you know execute uh, uh, then you can actually set the execution policies uh, as remote signed you know by typing a command uh, something like this okay set execution and then policy and then space remote signed okay so one if you are facing any issues while running this command okay just type this command okay actually it's small e okay type this command set execution policy remote signed okay and once you uh, press enter your policies will be it will ask you to basically enable it and it will ask to confirm by providing either yes no uh, etc okay so i have already enabled it that's why i'm not going to run it again okay now we need to install the unicorn library using a command called pip install unicorn okay so pip install unicorn okay so Gunigon is a Python web server gateway interface HTTP server which supports multi-thread and uh, hence it is suitable uh, for uh, if we need uh, to do some parallel processing in order to increase the response time. Okay, so basically it is a server which is compatible uh, with a number of web frameworks. Okay, and here you can see on the screen that it is successfully installed as you can see the message here, right? Okay, so now uh, we need to generate a requirements.txt file which is a file which contains all the required python libraries and packages uh, so we can run a command called pip freeze okay so we can do something like pip freeze and then greater than sign and then requirements.txt when you run this command all the necessary files uh, in fact all the necessary libraries uh, below, uh, related to python uh, in order to run this application will be uh, contained in this uh, requirements.txt i'm not going to run this because i have already ran it i am just going to show you how this file looks like so this is my requirement.txt which will contain all the libraries uh, which can support uh, this AI app which we have built okay so you can see all these libraries here okay which are required to uh, run this app on the remote server or web server all right so that's what we can do okay next we uh, need to create the runtime.txt file which is another file as you can see here I have created this runtime.txt file uh, this is a file where you can uh, specify which version of Python to run. Okay. And at the time of creating this video, by default, Heroku uses Python 3.6.2. Okay. So if you need another version, you can specify which one to use by creating this runtime.txt file and mentioning the required Python version, just like uh, let me open it. It is shown here. So this runtime.txt file contains the python version which i have mentioned it is not needed here but uh, i just wanted to let you know that you can use any other python version as well and in order to use that you need to create this file okay and provide the uh, python version just like mentioned here okay so folks this is it for this video to conclude uh, i explained various steps to start deploying our web app on heroku in a step-by-step -step manner this was a part one of the topic and I will be covering the remaining steps in the next upcoming video. Okay, so stay tuned and let me ask you a question from uh, this video today. Uh, what is the command used to generate the requirement.txt file? Please post your comments in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. 
you can also ask your technical questions in the comment section given below and i will be glad to answer your questions if you're watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button and in case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever i will release a new video so thanks for hanging out with me guys i will be covering next topic in the upcoming video so keep on watching thank you